<clears throat> Welcome back to Nickel and Comic Corner, classic lesson, non classic. This episode number 2570 and double shot 2464. Yeah, pretty much in the way for these two trades here. These are the last ones released for these particular trade series. First of which is the last, to my knowledge, X Factor Epic Collection. We're here reviewing Volume 9 After Lives. This book collects issues from the main book, issues 101 to 111, and number 9, which is the final annual for the series, because even when the series came back under Peter David, they never brought back the annuals. Nope, never did. Not even when it was all new X Factor, or even the Leah Williams book, no more annuals. The book also collects the Spider Man X Factor Shadow Games miniseries, along with Excalibur number 82 and X Force 38. Now, the Excalibur issue, the X Force issue, and issue 106, 108, 109 of X Factor, I'm not going to discuss this just because I've already discussed this already. Now, the mini issues themselves take a time period of April of 1994 and we conclude in February of 1993. Excuse me. Now, your writer for these books are Kurt Busiek, who does the X- Spider-Man X-Factor Shadow Games miniseries. I believe this was the only miniseries they actually had when a book was coming out. There's also Jan Matias, who's the main writer of the book, along with Todd Dezenko, T- Scott Lobdell, Fabian Caesar, John Francis Moore, Matthew Freeman, Amy Meyer, art by Pat Broderick, June, uh, Jan Dursma, Matt Boom, uh, Brian Hitch, Tony S. Daniel, Ken Lashley, Paul Borges, Carrie Gremmel, Roger Cruz, and Steve Epiting. Yeah, the miniseries is just basically just a quick team up miniseries of Spider Man and X Factor. I guess, I guess Mar figured though, hey, uh, they probably don't have plans. They probably didn't have plans to make the Marvel team concept at this point in time, so they really want to because they really also figured out that Spider-Man did an excellent job with teaming up with X Factor. But my guess is is that this crossover maybe was planned between both X the X Factor book and Spider-Man. But my guess is the writers both books didn't want to do it, so I guess they figured, okay, let's test Kurt Busiek. To do this three issue mini series, and then it's a little spy book per se for X Factor Shadow Games. Yeah, so let's call it Spider-Man and X Factor. Unlike the Sideways crossover, which was actually written to be Sideways, this one no, it is not. This one is another team with another Spider with another X Men team. Though, in the case of the one with X-Force, that was because Todd McFarlane was planning on leaving Spider-Man at that point in time. And they wanted to have this sort of this, this finale for that run, which wasn't a bad idea. This book, probably because books were selling pretty well this period of time, so why not? Spider-Man, of course, for the Studies miniseries, had, was already, had previously just appeared in this particular Spider-Man number 13. Now, <clears throat> basically, they, they follow this group known as Shadow Force. Yep, and they appear just in this one mini series. And then, pretty much, is basically on to the main X Factor book. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the battle. Uh, one of the characters, Mirage, gets killed off in the last issue. But I find the mini series to be pretty good. Bad Patrick does the ring artwork for this one. Now, in the case of issues 101 to um, 111. Now, in the case of these issues here, it is mostly put basically Havoc. uh, He quits the roster mainly due to the death of a man of a multiple man. He died in the previous issue. Well, his apparent death. So he quits team. What does he do right afterwards? He ends up joining the bread of immunes not long after this. Not immediately per se, but not long afterwards. And he's off the team. Yes, the leader of the team is off the roster. And by the way, 101 is at... Now, 101 and 104 are the last four issues David Teams would write before he gets placed by Todd Jerzenko. There's also with Storm and Professor Xavier these issues. Because why not? 
There's also stuff here with Malice. Yes, Malice. Yeah, where she ends up possessing Havoc to attack Polaris and several of these issues. Yep. Yeah, from issues 104 and 105. 102 and 105. Now, 104 is sadly put uh, Jamie Tias's last issue he does the book. And then Tom Dezenko takes over the book, the writing duties. And Havoc rejoins the roster, and then basically we see Return of Multiman. Well, we see the apparent death of the character. Now, that's kind of what happens over the course of a few issues. 106, discussed already because part of the Phoenix crossover. 107 is a standalone issue where you have the Blob versus Strong Guy. The issue had opened up with basically Blob basically coming from the sky and battling Strong Guy the whole issue. That is literally the issue. Yep. And then, after skipping over 108, because those were leading us into Age Apocalypse, mostly put, it's a two-parter with Strong Guy and Lily Cheney, a, a woman he was a bodyguard for, and rumor has it he actually had a thing for her. Yes, seriously. Yeah, sadly put, basically... Uh, she's growing the season comics because she got killed by a freaking sentinel. But apparently she's getting snap in half in Uncanny Spider-Man number three. Thank you, Side Spare, for killing a really interesting character. But you're thinking, okay. But what about the annual? The final ever annual released. Yeah. I do not know why there was another annual published. It... It's kind of weird. I, I've never known exactly the reason for it. And this annual came out in 1994. Which, by the way, 30 years ago and no annual release since then. It's basically a two-story book. JMT, this is the only annual he does for the book. Mostly put, basically, deals with the adversary. And also, Professor Power, who previously appeared in Peter, in Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 199. Yes. Yeah, it's mostly put X Factor versus him in this issue. Mm hmm. Yeah, he just appeared in that, that book. His next appearance actually is in, believe it or not, we don't see the guy again until 2008. Roughly 14 years later, he appears on screen in issue of Iron Man. Well,. It's uh, basically Vince Iron Book, and he appears in Nomad Girl when a World miniseries, an arc for Captain America. His last apparent appearance was in Modoc Hagen number two. I discussed a lot of this character's previous appearance already. The only appearance of the talk about for this character left, it just appearances in Mark too, which I will discuss in the future. Don't worry about that. But yeah, kind of a weird way to end up basically the Angels. But wait, there's also a backup story here. Well, the whole thing is about, oh yeah, the strong guy stuff. Yeah, he also ends up basically, like, remembering the events of X-Factor 100 when Multiman died, and he ends up basically destroying his own room. And Renee basically comes in and says, what happened? I was cleaning. Because the man suffered through grief because one of his closest friends died. And also, like, very nice you have it quit, so he comes back. Yep, but these issues were pretty good. I, I really enjoyed them. And like I mentioned, the final epic collection for X-Factor. Next up, we have the last known Mar Visionaries released for The Incredible Hulk. Volume 8. Uh, which collect the issues 90 to 90, 390, x X-Factor 76 and Annual 18. Now, X Factor issue, I'm not gonna discuss that already because I did it in the previous I did discuss the, the first trade that collects Pierre David's run for X Factor. Um, also kind of in a way, I already discussed issues 390, 392, or 392. Yeah, discussed issues already, and the annual is probably return of the, the Defenders storyline. Issue 93 is noteworthy for being the 30th anniversary issue. Where it features the return of a character was last seen back in Incredible Hulk number one back in 1962. And he gets killed off this issue. I am not kidding about that. Uh, 
I mean, you think about it, it's like there's not really a lot of issues discussed here. It's like roughly like four issues. Hmm? Igor Durangov, basically, he, well, he comes back in this issue. Yeah, because he, like I mentioned, he last paired in that issue there. And then, at, then he returns in this book here. Yeah, there's actually, yeah, the whole, and the cover is a homage to Incredible Hulk number one. It's mostly put just there to be his 30th anniversary, the people's protective in this, in this thing. There's also three other stories in here. There is a classic Battles of the Hulk, Grudge Match, and the Psychological Ramifications of Gamma Research. That backup story is done by Chris Cooper. Uh, Grudge Match is the third story. Classic Battles is done by Mate of Ours, Herb Trampham, Al Mulgroom, Sal Bushma, Mary Severin, Al Mulgroom, again, uh, Walt Simonson, Jim Starr, and Daniel Cohen. Really fun issue. And then basically issue number... 394 is mostly put basically a deal with the first appearance of a character named Trauma. Yeah. And he is not around very long. Not really. He's just there for 394, comes back in 413. And then we have the, the Return of the Defenders book, which was really fun with story to discuss. Now, what about 395? This is a quick uh, two parter where Punisher teams up with Daredevil. To take on Sam Strucker and Frost for a couple issues. And that's mostly put it. Of course, they also take on Dr. Octopus. Yep. Now, Punisher Lightning Experience and Terror Incorporated number six. He previously appeared before this two parter. His last known appearance was in Quasar 42. So, yeah, he was making the rounds here. Well, part of chronological, anyways. Yeah, Frost himself would next appear in the very next issue, along with Sam Strucker. Uh, Dr. Octopus previously appeared in Jim Valentino's final issue of Guardians of the Galaxy. I say final issue. Uh, it's final issue of his run, not that fine. The volume continued for another 33 issues before getting canceled by the replacement writer. And the guy who replaced the book was Michael Gallagher. Yeah, the that was part of that the run there. Yeah, so you basically was there part of the Massio stuff. And he's here for this issue here, and that is pretty much it. Also, with doing this, I'm out of 300s. Yep, the 300s are all done for Credible Hulk. Yep, because the very next Epic Collection, which had come out. Yeah, that I have discussed already. Mm-hmm, Yes. Yeah, the very next thing to review would be that epic collection. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, next one would be Ghost to Pass, which I've discussed already. So, not going to discuss it here. Not really, no. There's no reason to discuss it. Not really. It's weird that they include the annual in this book. It's kind of weird. So, yeah, next thing for Hulk would be just two straight epic collections. And then it would be, well, a on this book. And then basically back to the uh, last epic collection to finish this volume. And then I'll be done with Hulk. Now some of you might be thinking, okay, what are the places in Hulk with? I haven't decided yet. Because Hulk is getting pretty much almost not being, being reviewed. Because once I've issued this volume, just I have the I have the first trade that collects the, the current volume. I have that to review. But in the case of the main book, the uh, first volume altogether, yeah, once I finish the first volume, once I finish to get that 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 24th epic collection, I'm done reviewing the first volume. I would decide at that point what I'm viewing next, but yeah. So, um, in the case of both books, I give X Factor uh, Epic Collection Volume 9 a 9 out of This one I give roughly a 10 out of 10. Because basically, we, we're leading into basically when I start reading my, my, my first issue. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay? Until the next video. Bye.